After the highs of yesterday and getting my mega sale, I'm brought back down to earth by a load of electronics that don't seem to be working. Um, I'll show you what I've done. Um, I've started the day listing some bits and bobs through from hauls that I've sort of got in the last week. I've still got some haul stuff to catch up on um, YouTube and show you all. But yeah, I've been going through some rather expensive electronic buys and it's not been too great. So let me show you those. So this first one is um, a Facebook Marketplace pickup. And when I picked this up, I normally would test it and I didn't test it. It was 30 quid. And I said to, when I picked it up, it was the guy's wife I spoke to. And I said, is it working? And she said, yeah, yeah, it's working. Anyway, it powers up, but it's not playing or rewinding. It's the belts. And there are five belts in there, um, but I haven't got belts the right size. I've managed to get one on, so it plays, but plays slowly. I don't think it's quite the right size. Um, I'm still going to sell it for parts, and, and someone else can find the right belts, and hopefully has a bigger selection of drive belts than I have. Um, but it is a really nice piece of kit. It's um, I couldn't find any comps on this. It's the same old story like that CB thing. Can't find any comps on it. So I wasn't too sure how to price it. I bought it for £30. Um, so I've put it on for £69.99. Just saying it's for parts only. Needs new drive belts. Um, and explain that it powers up fine and does play but slowly. And rewind and fast forward don't seem to be working. Um, these don't light up either, but I don't think they're supposed to. Um, I'm just, just, you know, you would always assume that they do, but I, I can't see any kind of lights um, when I opened it up. Um, so we'll just see how that one goes. And of course, that makes me worry a little bit about, I've shown this before, the rest of this stuff. Um, so what happened was I bought this um, for 30 quid, put it in the car and started driving home. Um, and when I picked it up, I said to the bloke's wife, has he got any other stuff? And she said, oh, I don't know. I don't think so. But I'll get him to call you if he does. And on the way home, he did call me and sort of say, I've got, I've got these three. Um, so I went back and bought these and I bought this lot for 150. And I think originally wanted 200. Um, and now because this one is not quite what he said, and I've also been trying to buy a Spectrum off him, which is like an ongoing saga at the moment, because he doesn't quite seem to have be able to show me a working Spectrum. He's got three Spectrums and one power supply. It's all, all a bit of a nightmare. But when I when I bought these, he did plug each one in and showed me that they powered up, and they powered up and the light came on. But they weren't connected so I could hear sound coming through the amplifier or they weren't connected the the tuner wasn't connected to the amp so i could hear the sound coming out um, and this wasn't connected to an amplifier so i could hear a record being played i just saw the turntable turn and saw these two light up but i'm hoping that they're going to be okay we just have to um wait and see i mean sometimes you take a chance on um, Facebook Marketplace and sometimes you might get your fingers burnt. I'm hoping I've not got my fingers burnt. Like I say, with this, I, I bought this in mind with if I'm selling it for parts, I'll get what I paid. So I think I am selling it for parts. I bought it for 30 and I put it on for 70. I, yeah, I probably would take offers on it, but, you know, as, as long as I'm okay with, you know, the money I'll get back on it on 30 quid. If if I don't seem to be getting it, I'll probably try again and, and get the right size belts and fix it. Um, as for these, I've got to get a plug on these and oh, just probably wire them up so I can actually hear them hear them working. But I'm a little bit worried. Right, onto some PS3s now. This one this one's sounding like um a plane that's about to land. Um, this is actually a four port one and I didn't think this was working. I I turned it on. Let me turn this off. It lets me. There we go. 
hopefully just needs a bit of a clean up. When I, when I turned that on originally, the green light was coming on, but I wasn't getting any picture on the screen. So it's like, oh, here we go. And this was a four port backwards compatible PS3. Um, but you can do a trick on resetting the video option. So you hold this down, okay, and it will beep almost straight away. And then you keep holding it until you hear the second beep, which is probably five, six seconds later, and then take your finger off. And it resets the um, visual outputs and um, make sure you have a controller connected and you will get a message on your screen saying do you want to reset the uh, the um, HDMI outputs if I can do it actually so hold that down one beep we've had and then the second beep and then I think we should get the message this is like live demonstration when it goes all completely wrong there we go, an available HMI, HMI device was detected. So um, do you want to output video using the HMI and just select yes. There we go. So I didn't think that was working first off and I was like, oh God, here we go, but it is. Sorry, I'm trying to do things all cat handed Right, these other two. Uh, that one worked straight away, which is good news. So, uh, in, in regard to price, this one cost me 24 but it didn't have a power cable or an HDMI or a controller. And I bought it because it was a four port and I thought, well, I'll easily be able to um, sell it for more than that, you know, being a four port. Um, Another one of these, these two are two USB ports and one of these had a power supply and cost me 25 and one of them was just the um, the console and it cost me 10. Um, anyway, this one works. I can't remember which one is which. That could be the 25 or the 10 one. I don't know. I've got no idea. Um, but this one doesn't work. It has got a red light of death I don't know if it's a red light of death or a yellow light of death but basically you turn it on and it's green for a little bit and then you get the red light and you get three beeps and um, looking on YouTube uh, you have to take the hard drive out which is at the side and I'm not gonna this isn't a fixed video I don't normally like doing fixed videos it's just sort of pointing you in the right direction um, if you get this so you take the hard drive out and then um, take the cover off and you basically have to, um, it's due to the capacitors not being able to get enough voltage uh, to the chips, I think, or the board. And if you if you heat over the sort of processors, um, it can kind of reset the capacitors. Uh, so I'll be giving that a go later um, and then seeing if that solves it. It might, it might continue to be you know after doing that it may not read the disc and the laser might need replacing and all sorts of things might be wrong um but there you go swings and roundabouts of buying electronics i guess um i'm going to test all that texting stuff and see if that's working i've got i've got quite a bit of stuff that doesn't seem to be working yeah this uh this panasonic wasn't working either that was um the tape decks weren't working and uh it was the capstan drive belts on it and i, I didn't have the right size it's right old fiddle to try and get it apart um i might have another look at that just in case i've misunderstood where the belts go on it but uh yeah i mean i've been i've been sourcing like crazy and um it just goes to show a lot of people at boot fairs do try and palm off um, broken stuff but i don't know if you know you can sell it for more than you bought it at even when it's broken then um it's not too bad that cost eight quid so I think it's going on for 30 for parts. Right, I'm going to finish up today with some um, footage that I took the other day of me trying to source some boxes. And I managed to delete the start of it, um, so you kind of get me in mid-flow. 
but um, I did put it out there. Does anyone, does anyone actually want to see this? And two people said they did. So I expect the views from the drop off to go off. But it just shows what you can get for free if you have a bit of a, a rummage around your local area. I went to a pharmacy. I went to Sainsbury's, which is where I normally saw stuff. And I went to a garden centre and um, got some boxes. So here's that footage now. Right, I've managed to get a few from um, a local pharmacy. They always chuck away their boxes on a Monday. So I always go down there on a Monday. So it's worth asking local shops when um, they get rid of cardboard. Um, they put it out for the recycling, you know, the, the bin bin. Um, as long as you don't mind having kind of ten of pounds written on your box. I'll probably turn this one inside out to be honest. But they're good boxes. But yeah, sometimes you do get some uh, funny things written on them. So I'm in the um, Sainsbury's car park. So I'm just uh, going to pop up the Sainsbury's now. I'm going to try and get some wine boxes, which I use all the time. They're great for small parcels because they're just like less than 16 centimetres wide. Let's see if they've got any crisp packet boxes. It's thinner cardboard, but it's really good for inner packing if you're doing video recorders and just wrap it around a sleeve of that or games. If um, I'll wrap it around a, a, like a thin cardboard and then I'll brown paper it. So I'm going to see what I can get upstairs in Sainsbury's. There we go, just going to pick out the good ones out of there. Uh, something like that. It's going to take four of these. No crisp boxes. But there you go. Here we go, I've got six in the end. These are great. I mean, look, if they can carry wine bottles, it's good enough for me to um, parcel something up in. Like I say, I normally tape over the perforations and then, you know, uh, newspaper, void filler. Tape it all up, brown paper around it. Sometimes I don't if it's like a, you know, a normal looking box for something like that, I'll brown paper. And then uh, send it off. Small parcel. Right, I've just got to go to Hermes to drop this off. And then. Um, I'm going to ask the guy there if he's got any boxes, see if I can kill for some of him. Okay, no crisp boxes in Sainsbury's and no crisp boxes at the Hermes drop-off. Um, but I was going to these places anyway, so it doesn't really matter. So I'm now um, at the local garden centre. It's a big old garden centre which sort of sells not a lot of gardening stuff. Loads of like puzzles and they have cafeterias, you know, one of those sort of places. Um, and I'm going to see, they normally have good boxes here actually. So, and there's two places where they drop them. I don't know if I'll be able to do a lot of filming inside. It might be a bit awkward and I'm not going in with my trolley. Um, so I'll be doing a lot of putting boxes in boxes because they normally leave them already, you know, they don't flatten them. So, um, yeah, this one's the only one that's out of my way really, but it is literally like a minute up the road in the car. So it's not, you know, that much out of the way. So let's see how we do. Um, be back in a minute. Right, there's a massive, well, it's not that massive, but it's a queue to get in. So I'm not going to bother with that just to get boxes. I'm just going to check the other exit and see if I can snip in. I doubt I will be able to, but we'll see. Well, they did let me in. They let me in the exit because I said I was just getting boxes and there's two exits. So they, um, they let me in both. They didn't have a lot though. The first exit didn't have any. Just some banana boxes, which I don't really need. The second exit has this huge, huge box, but it's only single walled. So uh, yeah, it'll probably be cut up and used for um, just in a wrapping of video recorders before it goes in a, like a, either a double walled or a banana box. But that's good for like, or, or wrapping a board game before or brown paper it, you know, it's um, good good use for that. Oh, I'm still the mass marauder. They said that um, when they opened in mid-May, there was an hour and a half queue to get in. That is completely nuts. I mean, all people do in here, it's like of a lunchtime, it's Pensioner Central in this garden centre and they all go for um, to the canteen to have their you know, didn't lunch or whatever it is. It's absolutely bonkers. But the woman said, good tip. If you go into garden centres for boxes, just for boxes, go when it rains. But seeing as I can pop in in the exit anyway, I suppose any time will be all right. But um, yeah, worth checking these places out when it is raining because there's uh, less people here. So yeah, I'm going back home now. Yeah, that was it. Um, not too bad on the boxes, really. Uh, like I say, I get the wine boxes as and when I'm dropping off post and, uh, and normally crisp boxes as well. Sainsbury's is my main place for those. 
um, and normally here is very good. Um, Friday afternoon at garden centres or at DIY places or any shops is probably your best bet because they're putting stuff out for the weekend. So Friday afternoon and it's raining, you're going to be in business hopefully. Uh, but that's all for me for now. Um, hope you enjoyed something a little bit different. Uh, take care. I'll see you soon. Hope you enjoyed that. Just goes to show you can get free boxes if you look around. Um, I'm going to be doing another haul video of stuff I got last weekend in, uh, that's currently in quarantine, all the stuff at the moment. But um, I think I can show it, so it'll probably be tomorrow. So until then, I'll see you soon and take care.